So, everybody doing okay? Yeah. Um, we're we're going to show a, a clip. We have that ready on that clip I sent you, Marissa. I just wanted to show you this clip on prayer. Uh, it will tie in with what I'm going to preach on today, but it's really awesome. Okay, go ahead. This is at the ramp with, um, what's her name? Karen Wheaton. So, <laughs> we are, so oh, good, okay. You know, um, I first came here, uh, when I say here, I mean Hamilton, Alabama, uh, to the ramp in 2007. I came all the way from Manchester in the United Kingdom, and uh, my life was radically turned around. And one of the main messages I remember hearing was, you know, don't just come here and have a nice experience. Go home and start a prayer meeting. And that's exactly what I did. I went home and I started a prayer meeting. And it's turned into thousands of people being mobilized to fast and pray for the nation. And I believe in the power of prayer. You see, I believe, you know, we talk about unreached people groups in the earth, people that have never heard the gospel. I believe the body of Christ is an unreached people group in the era of prayer. Because if you really understand the power of prayer, you will never want to miss a prayer meeting. Listen, a casual approach to prayer produces casualties. And there are many people going to hell because the church has not taken a stand in prayer to contend for souls. Listen, he says in scripture, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And what's the next word Jesus says? Come on, somebody. The harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. What's the next word Jesus says? That's too weak. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. What's the next word Jesus says? That's better. The response to the magnitude of the harvest is not going. The response to the magnitude of the harvest is prayer. Because many people are going, but they've not been sent from prayer. In order for us to see cities change and nations change, we have to be sent from above. And when we start to pray, something starts to happen in the heavens and that becomes a sending movement. The prayer movement gives birth to the sending movement that gives birth to the awakening we're seeking for. It starts in prayer. There are no shortcuts to revival. So I want to say to you, don't just come here and have a nice experience with God. God is calling you to become a prayer warrior. Intercession and prayer is not for special people. Every single one of us is called to intercession. You saw those girls lead worship, powerful earlier on? You look at people who lead worship on the platform and you call them worship leaders. You don't look at them on the platform and say, they're called to worship and you're not. We're all called to worship. But they're anointed with a leadership gifting and they can sing and play. So when they play, they help us focus on God. In the same way, we're all called to prayer. We're all called to intercession. Some people may be anointed to lead in it, but that's not to say it's just for them and not for everybody else. I'm going to finish with this. Jesus is an intercessor. The Holy Spirit is an intercessor. Two-thirds of the Godhead intercede. The longest serving ministry in heaven and on earth is the ministry of intercession and worship. I'm telling you, intercession is a big deal in the heart of God. It's not just for some special people. It's for all of us. So we are called to cry out to heaven. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth in America as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. So I commission you all to pray, to come out and pray. We need prayer warriors. God has called us all to intercede, and it is prayer that changes things. Amen. So I just thought that was awesome. Easter sent it to me, and I said, oh, we are so showing this. And uh, it is a word. It's a word in season. And, you know, today I'm teaching on, um, um, like Peter said, I'm teaching on Purim uh, out of the book of Esther. And I'll tell you, you want to talk about 
a miracle, like what, what um, Martin was talking about. He had one report, but see, God had another plan. And so that's where, again, it's through prayer. It's through the meditation of the word. It's through the declarations of what we say that builds us up so much that you take a stand because you're going to hear the chatter. You're going to hear the words of the enemy. That's He shoots his arrows at us all the time. Whose voice are you going to listen to and whose voice is louder in your life? So that's where, again, you see in this glorious portion, this, I, I, you know, I really believe that this book is a, is a shadow of things to come. The book of Esther is a kingdom book. And it's about who we are and who God has called us to be from before the foundations of the earth, that we are called to be royalty, people of dominion and authority. And so in the book of Esther, it starts out, and, and I'm going to go th fast through a lot of this to get to really what I want, but just bear with me. You know, I can go fast. I know I can. So it starts out in Esther chapter 1, and in Esther chapter 1, really in verse 10 to 12, I'll read this, and it says, on the seventh day, we are, what is the season in Hebrew, in Hebrew numbers, 5777 double portion, the seventh day, a time of completion on the seventh day. And I feel this is a prototype. This is a picture of where we're at in the earth right now. It says here on the seventh day of the party, the king high on wine, we're going to say high on the wine of Holy Spirit. Okay. High on wine ordered the seven eunuchs who were his personal assistants to bring him Queen Vashti resplendent on, in her royal crown, and he wanted to show her beauty off to the guests and officials, and she was extremely good-looking. In verse uh, 12, it says, But Queen Vashti refused to come, refused the summons delivered by the eunuchs, and the king lost his temper. Okay, so I just want to I, I stop there because I believe I'm going to take it from this perspective. The king is calling the church to rise up. He's calling all of us to rise up because he wants to display the beauty, yeah. his beauty, his, his glory that's in us to the world. And we've been in a place, the church at large, and you can also check your own heart, but also see where the world is at now. The rebellion, God has been calling us to the forefront. And, and many of the people, many of the voices have been Queen Vashti saying no and walking in rebellion. And, and so God is saying, listen, I love you too much to let you stay where you're at. And he's calling us all to get our, our lives intact to come right, to get right before the king because of his glorious splendor that he wants to display in our lives okay so in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 through 27 it says this I'm going to parallel the old with the new and in the NIV version I gave you all the scriptures back there if you want to put it up in Hebrew I mean, I'm sorry Ephesians 5 uh, 25 through 27 it says husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave him up for her to make her holy cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word, that's really important, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless, all right? So he wants to, you know, look at it as the king, okay? He's, he's saying, listen, I want my church to rise up. I want to display her glory. I want to display the beauty, the miracle working power of my presence, my love for my bride. I want that displayed in the world because we have the answer. You have the answer. I have the answer because we all know, like the testimonies that we heard, had it not been for Jesus, where would we be? Amen. Where would Martin be? I've had cancer. I was healed of cancer. What about deliverance? What about restoration? What about financial breakthrough? What about turnaround? What about where you were hopeless and you wanted to die and God turned your life around? What about when your kid was dying and God raised them up? What about in your heart where you've been so dried up and the spirit of the Lord overpowers you and overtakes you? That's only comes through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no drug. There is no song there is no person other than jesus christ that causes that kind of breakthrough in our lives amen so that's why when you see the passion when you hear the worship when you see people taking a stand for where we're at it's because we have experienced god and we know that there's 
you know, yes, there's hardship there. I'm going to talk about the sufferings of Christ. But God is a God who loves us and wants us. He gives everyone a challenge and say, listen, I'm extending my scepter to you. Put your hand down and touch it. The favor and grace is upon you. Take a stand. Listen to my words over the lies of the enemy for you to walk in breakthrough. I didn't say a perfect life. I said a breakthrough, a covenant of peace that through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Amen. Through it all, 